recognition for being such great hosts and uh, allowing us to gather here to conduct our business today. From time to time, members of Congress host field hearings on a variety of matters. And uh, I can say that Congresswoman Green and I have been involved in field hearings on illegal immigration, on spending, on civil rights, on China, on House rules. And these hearings allow us to be able to establish a record that we can then use in the committees upon which we serve in the Congress. A Congresswoman Green serves on the Oversight Committee, which has taken a particular in interest in the subject matter that we will be discussing today. And I serve on the House Judiciary Committee, where we have oversight over the Department of Justice and the ATF as well. Uh, we can use and will use the content and clips from our discussion today uh, during a committee debates. You may have seen recently when we had Special Counsel Durham before the Judiciary Committee, I used clips that had been developed in prior hearings uh, to be able to elicit answers. And we also make a record so that in the internal meetings and caucuses of the members of Congress, we're able to persuade people to our viewpoints. And, and as we gather here today, members of Congress are receiving feedback on important matters such as this because we are upon the appropriations process where I know Congresswoman Green and I have great interest in ensuring that the resources of our government are not directed uh, at entities that have been weaponized against our people. And uh, so before I, I give my full opening statement, we'd actually like to play a video uh, reflecting on, on some of the discussions that we've had in Congress on these matters. 16 federal ATF agents were met with questions and skepticism by four Georgia members of Congress. I just introduced the bill to eliminate the ATF. The war on gun owners' rights has been waged long enough and it's time to stop it. Why should you be able to destroy the life of one of my constituents over a technicality where they weren't even at fault when you all lose thousands of guns and illegally keep hundreds of thousands of records? Congress has, has given us uh, the authority to inspect. You have imposed a zero tolerance policy that is resulting in the highest rate of revocations in 16 years, and you wouldn't be able to meet your own zero tolerance policy because you lose stuff you're supposed to keep, and then you keep stuff that it's illegal to keep. ATF Director Steve Diedelbach have weaponized the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms against law-abiding American citizens in order to facilitate a radical anti-gun agenda. The Second Amendment is what stands between Americans and anarcho-tyranny, and many know this. Increasingly across the country, as Soros-backed prosecutors are installed with orders to stop prosecuting violent crime and criminalize self-defense, so too has the ATF been dispatched to make sure that Americans are not in a position to defend themselves. And increasingly the strategy we have observed and that we will discuss today involves targeting firearms dealers. Uh, at recently when we had our open gates day and I was in Baker, Florida having a cheeseburger at the Gator Cafe, the folks just a table over were FFL dealers and didn't even know I would be there but had their own story of, of harassment and overreach and abuse of power by the ATF. Later that day when I was in Jay, Florida, I met with a, a local businessman, mom and pop shop, walked into his library, showed me a picture of his grandfather and a picture of his father, both of whom had run that firearms business. And he said one day he wanted to have his photo and his son's photo on that very same wall. And they are currently enduring administrative hearings to take away their licenses because on three forms, a clerk, under county, misread county as country and put United States of America instead of Santa Rosa County. And for that grave offense, this multi-generational business is at risk of losing their license. President Biden and Steve Diedelbach know that all out gun confiscation is unfeasible, nearly impossible. So instead they're going after the sellers and manufacturers of firearms. They want to make it impossible to exercise Second Amendment rights, and what better way to do this than to make it difficult to purchase a firearm? Make no mistake, the ATF is going after Americans, and FFLs are just in the way. In the last two years, FFL re revocations are the highest they have been in 16 years. Joe Biden and Director Diedelbach's zero-tolerance policy is an overt and outrageous attempt to criminalize bookkeeping, According to their policy, perfection 
is the new business standard. And a good faith clerical error made in a typo and a date is enough to revoke a firearms license. This standard does not require any intent. Nowhere in our justice system is such a standard found. Nowhere will you pay such a high price for a good faith and negligible error, not to mention that the error may be the result of trying to comply with erroneous and confusing red tape. This standard is unconscionable, unconstitutional, and an affront to the rule of law in our country. Federal firearm licensees all over the country are now being targeted by the ATF, and right here in our district in Northwest Florida, we see that occurring as well. Numerous constituents have been targeted and harassed for no reason at all. The ATF comes in and tries to put them out of business, and I know Congresswoman Green will speak to that dynamic in Georgia as well. Many of these constituents are so terrified about retaliation, and rightly so, that they could not be here today. But two of my constituents, Chris Smith and Miles Schuler, are here today, and I thank them for their advocacy and for standing up for their rights and for standing up for their customers as well and their rights. I hope that their testimony will embolden others who are watching to come forward and provide us critical evidence in this endeavor. Just last week, the IRS raided a Montana gun shop and confiscated ATF forms 4473, which contained personally identifying information of firearm purchasers, as well as the serial numbers of firearms that were purchased. The warrant was for fi financial records, but these ATF forms were confiscated even though they were outside of the scope. No one can deduce that these records will make their way to the ATF to join the nearly one billion records already in the possession of the ATF that are being digitally transferred to searchable databases in contradiction to existing statute and the DOJ's own directives. This unconstitutional database is still in effect today despite the Government Accountability Office reprimand to the ATF in 2016 for maintaining this database and not adhering to their own standards. The history of the ATF is fraught with misconduct. Since 2015, thousands of guns have been stolen from the ATF's National Disposal Branch. Recently, the ATF has been caught routinely misclassifying bureaucrats as law enforcement officers, improperly costing taxpayers millions of dollars in additional pay and enhanced benefits that's supposed to be going to law enforcement officers. The ATF has even been known for setting up entrapment stings around the country and here in Florida, taking advantage of mentally disabled people in order to sell guns to criminals with the hope of tracking those guns. And they often lose track. This agency is an absolute clown show masquerading as a law enforcement bureau. Not to be outdone by past transgression, their latest bureaucratic assault on the Second Amendment is horrifying. The ATF's new rule, criminalizing pistol braces, is a brazen attempt to usurp congressional authority over our nation's laws, and they are abusing their rulemaking powers. I believe that this pistol brace rule will fail for the same reason the bump stock rule failed. The ATF does not have the authority to create federal law. This new rule will ban pistol, pistol braces on certain firearms, forcing users to jump through numerous hoops to comply with this decree or risk becoming a felon. Tens of millions of Americans could be affected. Disabled veterans, many of whom live in Northwest Florida, have used these braces for years to help them fire these pistols, enhance their mental health, engage in recreation and sports shooting. Now these law-abiding Americans, many of whom are patriots and heroes, will have to destroy their newly illegal firearm or figure out how to comply with arbitrary and confusing regulations outlined in the National Firearms Act. I'm not sure if the ATF really knows what this entails, but I sure know that Director Diedelbach doesn't know because he contradicted himself in testimony before the House Judiciary Committee. If a private citizen did a quarter of what the ATF does on a yearly basis, they would be thrown in prison for the rest of their life. The ATF may be beyond reform. It's a prime directive, and it's unconstitutional and diametrically opposed to Americans' rights to bear arms increasingly in their actions. There's no immediate timetable in which the ATF might become an ally of law-abiding Americans. Even under Republican administrations, the ATF has become an enemy of firearm owners without enhancing public safety. This is why we are leading the fight, along with Congressman Green to defund 
and abolish the ATF, and I urge my members who cherish their rights to look for ways to empower our local law enforcement, to empower state law enforcement, to be able to utilize other assets uh, to get away from an agency that seems to have lost its way. Uh, Congresswoman Green, I now recognize you for your opening statement. Uh, thank you very much, 